Hello and welcome to this Stitch Along with the London Embroidery School. I am your host for today, Natasha. I hope you are well. You join me today because we have a brand new class coming out this week to you lovely people of the London Embroidery School community. So um, yeah, I am very excited to be presenting this to you today. So it's going to be an intermediate timbre class is what we are releasing. And I today am working on the very first part of that class, which is a technique called vermicelli. Now, this one is a really interesting one because I find it really soothing to sort of like ease yourself into and just get going with your stitching. Once you get into a rhythm, it's really nice to just meander your way around the space and just really enjoy your stitching. You know, really lose yourself in it. Anyway, how are all of you? Because this is my first stitch along of 2022. So yeah, happy new year, I guess. Um, it's been a little while. We've been very busy in the background working on all sorts of different things. So we're really looking forward to bringing you all of that in this coming year because we've had a few changes in the studio. So um, yeah, it's all go really, but I can assure you there's been plenty going on in the background, even though we may have been a little quiet on the surface. Now, if you have any questions that you'd like to pose to me today, it can be timbre related, it can be something else if you prefer, it can just be stitching related perhaps, um, that you think that I might be able to help you with, then please do feel free to pop those into the comments below. I will be trying to check that periodically whilst I'm stitching. So if I do miss your question or query or statement, um, don't worry, it's not that I'm trying to ignore you or anything like that. It's probably just that I was looking at my stitching when it came through um, and I will try and, you know, catch up on those later or revisit them in the DMs if, um, if I don't manage to get to your request. It'd be lovely to know where you are joining me from today. If you are somewhere interesting, you can probably guess that I am in London, uh, unsurprisingly, as the name of our company suggests. Uh, that is where we are based if you are new to us, although I expect if you're watching this, you're probably not brand new to the London Embroidery School, but you may well be. Who knows? Lovely to see we've got a fair few people joining. I can see I've got a question here asking, um, what is actually included in the kit? So the kit is an intermediate kit and does work on the premise that you have done some timbre before. So it includes the three sizes of timbre hook that we are going to be using throughout the class, a fine, a medium and a heavy weight. It also includes all the materials you will need to actually make the final design, which is this sort of black hole constellation design. It's really pretty, lots of colour. I will show you that just in one second. And so the materials wise, uh, we have some bugle beads, we have some bright check, we have some pearl pearl, both of which are um, gold work materials. If you've tried any gold work, you'll be familiar with those terms, but we're using them in this design uh, as a timbre material. Also includes uh, these two colors of sequence that I'm working with today and the accompanying threads. There is some wire that we need for uh, laying down some edging and a wool thread as well as um, you've got your two base fabrics and you get a presentation frame to pull it all together. And there's a, probably a couple of other little bits that I'm forgetting. Um, I feel like, oh, there's a beading needle in there as well. Um, yeah, I, th I think that, that's all I can get off the top of my head. But it's basically everything you'll need to do the kit on the premise that you've already done some timbre stitching before. And therefore, you know, already have a, a hook and handle. Um, although obviously you get extra hooks, but you'll have a handle to start with and an embroidery hoop 
um, that will allow for you to stitch with both hands like you need to for timbre. So uh, either, you know, a slate frame, a table clamp frame or um, a seat frame. Now the final design looks like this. Here we go. So you can see that under layer of the vermicelli really sparkles wonderfully once you've got all of your stitches in. And then we've got the layers on top as well that add to that effect, all sort of swirling round. So we've got the wool thread through here. We've got our um, angled bugle beads, which we will teach you during the class. We've got the pearl pearl and the bright check applied there, both gold work materials, but worked in a timbre way. Um, yeah, I think it's a really fun design. And it comes in this presentation hoop for you to finish up with. So um, it's, you know, easy to get it straight up on the wall, basically. This is being released on Friday to the general public. Now, if you are one of our, we like to call VIPs, so if you're part of the mailing list or you have joined the Facebook group, then you actually will already have access to this class already today. Um, so if you are one of those people, then do check your emails uh, if you're part of the mailing list. If you'd like to become one of our VIPs, then by all means, please join one of the two ways to be a VIP. Um, the mailing list, you can join the mailing list at the bottom of our homepage, our website. There is a little, bottom, ooh, there is a little box down the bottom um, that allows you to pop in your email address and will get you subscribed to our mailing list so that you can be one of the first to hear about um, new kits like this and to get your first dibs in right really um the other way is to join our facebook group now the facebook group is new we've always had a facebook page but the facebook group is uh, more of like a club type feel and we will you know put up polls and that sort of thing to get a bit more of you guys's opinion on things on there so if you want to start to you know help to shape what you want to see from the london embroidery school then that really is the place to do that uh, we do it a little bit on instagram but the instagram is kind of well it, it, you know we have a quite a few followers which is wonderful but um we would like to have you know somewhere that's a tiny little bit more exclusive for the people who really want to get involved in yeah shaping the london embroidery school so the facebook club page is the place to do that and you will find details of how to join that if that's the way you'd like to interact with us on our regular facebook page um so do head over there if you'd like to join us basically uh we've got a bit of a competition running there at the moment which is to do with stitching buddies. So you just submit a picture of your favorite stitching buddy, whether it's a pet or um, a friend or, you know, you tell us basically. And um, you will be up for winning one of our gold work pair kits, which all in all is worth about a hundred pounds. So it's, it's worth submitting a photo of, you know, your stitching companion. Now, let me have a little look through the questions because I think I just saw another one come through that I don't think I answered. Uh, the wooden triangle bead tray isn't included in the uh, intermediate timbre class kit, but they are available on the website and I believe they are in stock. So if, um, if you want to get one of these and they are, I mean, that's my preference, to be honest. I think this little spoky thing particularly when you're tampering, it's just so handy that the thread can just run off the reel. I love it. And uh, I can't sort of tamper with that. Well, I can tamper without it, but I need something. So if you don't like to use uh, a little spoke like I've got on the bead tray, you could also use a little dish like um, a ramekin or something, which would just allow for your thread to turn freely without uh, getting twisted up because that's part of the problem with timbre is that um, because it's coming straight off the reel, your thread kind of wants to get quite uh, tangled up quite easily. But having the little spoke here on the bead tray really helps with that. So yeah, if you are like me, I would suggest perhaps when you grab one of the intermediate timbre online class kits 
Uh, you might like to get a bead tray as well, but it is a personal preference. In the class, I do also use um, a velvet, velvet board briefly um, for the gold work materials that we talk about, which looks a little bit like this, which just helps to control the chipping when you're cutting it and that sort of thing. But those are optional extras. Um, and we go through some alternatives the things you might like to use if you don't have access to um, a velvet board at the time. If you've never tried any gold work, then allow this timbre class to be your introduction to gold work. You might fall in love with a new technique. You can see I also have another question here asking if this class is suitable for beginners. It is not. Um, it is an intermediate class. It does work on the premise um, that you already have some stitching experience. So if you are brand new to Tamba and you're seeing this today and thinking that you might like to try this, I would absolutely encourage you to. We do have a beginner's class, the Tamba online class, which is a triptych. We work on three weather themed designs to go through stitching, uh, Tamba with beads and then Tamba with sequins in the third and final class. And those three sit really nicely together and form a good strong base foundation to your timbre skills, introducing you to all you need to know to get going and to bring you up to a level where you could tackle this design and start to really push those boundaries. Because this class is really focused on tension and stitch direction and your angle. We teach you how to prepare your own design and your own materials. So it sets you up in such a way that you could um, go on to produce your own designs. You know, if you've got something in mind that you think you'd like to do in timbre, but you don't quite have the skill set yet to do that. And the problem with a lot of obviously beginners classes is that um, it's teaching you the technique, but once you know the technique, you still sort of don't really know about how to set up your own design, um, how to take it from being an idea to actually a functional embroidery and what the process of that is. And that is part of what we go through in this class. Now, um, I can see uh, jeans.cycle says, hi, is this a punching needle technique? No, this is not a needle punch technique. This is a uh, timbre hook and hand handle. It's um, a very old technique, believed to be originally French, although, you know, in the sands of time, it is um, sort of some of the origins get a bit hazy, let's just say. However, the word timbre is a French word, um, meaning drum, because we stretch the fabric as tight as the drum in order to do stitching. Like the same root as tambourine, interestingly enough. Also a type of drum. There you go, a little bit of uh, side knowledge there for you. Um, and so there are similar techniques that um, originated much further east, you know, India, Pakistan, those sorts of places do have their own version of this as well. It is um, kind of almost the perfect opposite. It works from the other side. We're working from the reverse here um, with Tamba. So we work from the wrong side, but the actual sort of finished embroidery is going to be this underside. Now, the beauty of, um, of this is that because your materials are pre-prepared, oh, I just lost my thread there. Don't do that if you're doing this. Um, because your materials are pre-prepared and pre-strung for you when you start your designs, you can kind of get at quite a good speed going with your stitching because you're working with a continuous length of thread. It allows you to sort of settle into a rhythm and kind of fall into a bit of a trance. I find this quite meditative most of the time. I love to sort of pop an audio book on and just start stitching and watch it develop. I think that's really part of the beauty of timbre, particularly with something like this vermicelli technique. Um, because it builds so naturally and you're just sort of following your own thoughts and designs as you go, it's not too rigid. You're not trying to follow any particular pattern. And um, yeah. 
can become quite trance-like. It's one of those things with like repetitive motions and that is absolutely what timbre is. It's a very repetitive motion because everything is based off of this chain stitch that we create. Now, vermicelli is a really interesting technique of its own because it's everyone's vermicelli is kind of unique. Um, it's a little bit like handwriting in that you aren't following a set design, as I say, you're just looking to fill a space with this sort of undulating fill. And so because of that, it gets used in couture fashion quite a lot. It's often the way that sequins will have been sewn down onto fabric when there is like a whole surface of sequins in clothing, that is. Um, and because of the materials being already preloaded onto the thread, it allows for that continuous flow of materials, allowing you to be that bit faster, hence why it's good for big coverage, like a whole dress. Like I'm thinking floor length here, you know, like proper haute couture, fancy ball gowns. This is likely to be how beads and sequins have been applied to those fabrics. The fabric that I'm working on today is a black organza. I have obviously popped some white surface underneath so you guys can see nice and clearly what's going on. And you will notice that the thread that we have chosen is matched to the colour of the sequins. And this is so that from the right side, you see as little of the thread as is possible. Uh, textiles of Amelia V, do you sell the table clamp also? Yes, we do. Um, that is an essential part of a tambourer's kit. Um, and because this is an intermediate class and we expect you to have already, you know, tambored before, um, to therefore have some of the essential materials and equipment that you would need. Well, essential equipment, I should say, not materials. So your timbre handle and your clamp frame. If you don't have those, of course, they are part of the beginner's kit, the beginner's deluxe kit. If you want to um, start there, if you are, as the title suggests, a beginner. Or if you've already got one and not the other, you can buy them individually off of our website. The specialist equipment section will sort you out on that front. Thank you to those of you who have been submitting questions. It's lovely to um, you know, actually get to kind of interact with you guys a little bit and hear what you're thinking, um, you know, what you're curious about the things that you need clarifying because otherwise uh, it often feels like I'm just, you know, chatting to myself in a room, which is not entirely untrue. But when you guys talk back to me, it, then it's no longer true. Now, what else have we got? I would be interested to know, what is it about Tamba that you are interested in? What is it about Tamba that you like? And do you have any particular thoughts on where you'd like to use your new Tamba skills when you have them under your belt? Have you got a particular project in mind that you're desperate to do and this is sort of the, uh, the key to making that a reality? Or is it just something that you've seen and you're curious about and want to give a go? I always think that if you have crocheted, because it is a hook on a much bigger scale than a tambour hook, but it is a hook, then you kind of have a bit of an advantage to this. Like you've already practiced the motion just on a slightly bigger scale. I don't think that quite translates to knitting per se, because obviously it's two needles, it's a very different motion, but I do feel like crochet is very close to this. Um, so I wonder if that 
tallies up with any of you guys' experience of learning timbre. If you have learned timbre, that is. It's such a different type of technique to other embroidery techniques, basically, because it's done with this hook. So even if you are, you know, very experienced with needle-based embroidery, sort of doesn't give you that much of an advantage. So if you've been embroidering for a while and, you know, are looking for a new challenge, this might well be it, you know. It certainly has a way of, I think, humbling you. It does town bear. It's, uh, it's a really interesting one. I would also be interested to know if any of you have any thoughts about what you would like to see from us, the London Embroidery School, um, in the next year. You know, is there anything that you really think we should be adding to our repertoire? Um, it would be great to see if it tallies up with some of the things that we're already working on in the background. Or perhaps, you know, we need to change direction slightly. So if you have any thoughts on that front, I would also be really interested to hear from you. Just drop my stitch there, but it's okay, we can pick it up again. So one of the great and terrible things about timbre, I always think, is that obviously if you drop a stitch and pull, all of your stitching effectively will start to unravel very easily. And, um, but therefore, if you get it wrong, you can just unhook your stitch and start over, you know, it works both ways just like I did there. And then you can just kind of scratch away and ease the threads of your fabric kind of back into place where you punctured them. Once they've relaxed again, then you can just begin again. Um, Textiles of Amelia asks, is there any fabrics you could talk, sorry, is there any fabrics you can't tamper onto? Mm, possibly leather. I feel like that would be really hard on your hands. Can't say I've tried it myself. Um, when you have some tamper experience and then you can probably start to move on from sheer fabrics like we're working on here to more opaque fabrics. Because you can't see what your underneath hand is doing, you are then just working purely by feel. And so that makes it a lot more difficult, but not impossible. So like with most things, I think it's just more about experience and practice. The more you do, like with most things, the easier it gets. dropping my stitches. Sorry, guys. Now, as for our future plans, I have been thinking quite a lot about a another gold work based class. Um, and so it would be good to know if that's something that you think you'd be interested in. Would you like to know more about kind of more creative gold work? Or, you know, would you prefer some more lace-based classes going forwards? I know it's taken us a little bit of time to get together this timbre class and to bring out some more beading. Um, we obviously brought out the coral beaded class last year. I think that was in April. Was that April? Yeah, perhaps. Which, you know, beading a little bit like this, but entirely different, basically. Exactly the same, but entirely different. 
um, because that is all based on beading with a needle rather than beading with a hook. So a different set of skills altogether. But um, yeah, between those, those are kind of our only beading classes. So do you think we need more beading classes? Are you only interested in the shiny things? The answer is yes, that's absolutely fine as well. No judgment here. I am a fellow magpie. Definitely love some shiny things. Okay. You can see with this technique, it builds up quite quickly. You know, the amount of coverage you get for quite a dense fill happens quite fast, which is quite satisfying, you know? And not something you can say all that often of embroidery. So often, embroidery is a patience game. And I think that kind of becomes the mark of who becomes a, you know, lifelong embroiderer and who sort of just dabbles in the occasional little bit of stitching and, um, but you know, needs to take a break from it quite regularly. Because it is a bit of a test of patience. However, this is one of the other reasons why I really like vermicelli. It's because it allows you just to keep building, keep adding, until the whole area is filled. Emma Embroidery Love says more beading classes would be good. I think that said more beading classes would be good. Okay, fab. Thank you for your feedback. Duly noted. I will keep that in the back of my mind when I'm thinking about new classes. You may have also noticed that uh, we have a new website, which is looking really snazzy, lots of colour. We're really pleased with it. So hopefully you're finding that nice and easy to navigate. We sort of tried to streamline some of the menus that we had, some of the options that we offer to bring them more in line with, I think, what you guys need from us. Are you guys still interested in the online classes or are you really looking for us to bring back our in-person classes? See, now that the uh, pandemic is officially over, in official terms, that is at least, um, you know, are you looking to still take as many online classes or do you just find it convenient to work from home or embroider from home? Okay, so we've got a few different options on that front. Uh, we've got a couple of people saying online, a few people saying both, love the online classes. Okay, cool, so a real mix. Yeah, we're not planning to take anything away. Don't worry about that front. Um, we are just looking to keep adding to our repertoire. So, you know, as always, you know, with our online classes, you have continuous access to them. They don't expire or anything like that. Um, so, you know, if you decided to take, for example, the timbre class and then wanted to, you know, refresh yourself in a year or so, you can do that. No worries. You'll still have access via the links, which will be in your email. As I mentioned earlier, this is a three part class. So the first part is about the preparation of your materials um, and your design. And then we work on this vermicelli technique. We try out a little drawing um, exercise first. And that just allows us to get a feel for what we're trying to achieve with our stitching. And then we actually just jump straight into the stitching side of things. The second class is all about the gold work materials. So that's where we do the chipping and um, we start to create that fill with our bright check in the orange and we also lay our large pearl pearl we've got 
gold pearl palette we work with in this class. We lay that down in strips. Now that's a really interesting technique because although we obviously are teaching you with the pearl pearl, um, the approach could be used to apply pretty much any material as a line. So if you were, you know, wanting to apply strips of crystals or anything like that, let me just show you. So that's referring to this technique here, where we apply strips of the pearl pearl into place. And this is the, the bright check that I talked about. Um, but yeah, a, the stitching approach that we use to apply the pearl pearl could be used for any strip material, basically, you know, feathers, crystals, cord, anything like that. So it's um, a really good approach to learn. And then the third class is where we work on this angled bugle bead um, application. So you are likely to have worked with bugle beads before if you've timbered before, but not to kind of be able to spread them out in this way. That's probably something that you haven't tried before and so we will obviously walk you through that as well as applying um, the satin stitch that we have which here we do in this wool thread for contrast and that is over a wire so let me just show you that on its own so you can see I've got the wire applied on this one here and this is just the layer two before we get the satin stitch going on top and that's going to allow us to have a really crisp edge, but it could also be used for like stump work purposes. Lots of um, interesting options for that once you've got it mastered. Um, Rosie Watkins dot embroidery asks, are gold work and timbre beading often used together? Uh, well, the quick answer to that one is no. Um, <laughs> This class is more of kind of an experimental approach to timbre. It's not necessarily that traditional, but it's more just trying to open up the options of, you know, what you could achieve with timbre skills. It's a very traditional technique. It's very old, as I mentioned earlier, but, um, you know, that doesn't mean that you necessarily just have to stick to the traditional outcomes and traditional uses and materials for timbre. I always think that embroidery is there to have fun with, you know, make something beautiful is what we are always saying. And if that means playing around with different ways of joining different techniques together, having some different approaches and just generally playing with it, I don't think we play with our materials enough personally. And so we try to develop some things that feel that little bit more playful. And hopefully then you guys too can enjoy just sort of playing around with different fills and uh, yeah, different materials. And once you've learned how to manipulate the techniques for different materials, it opens up even more things to you. And that's where we get really excited is in seeing what you guys want to do with the skills that we're teaching, you know? Because so many of you are such talented and interesting makers and artists in your own right that are just kind of waiting for the right skills to bring these things to life. And that's, that really is where um, we feel that sort of that fire getting lit underneath us to create more things and teach you more stuff so that you can go on to make really interesting pieces. Now, who's, I had a question there, sorry, one second. Uh, I think that's Sandy8827. Can this be done on regular clothing or does it require specific material type? So in theory, if you could frame it up, then you can timbre on it. 
you need to be able to get it into a frame of some description like this one I have here, which is a table clamp frame that allows you to stitch with both hands. A regular embroidery hoop will not do for timbre because you, you need both hands to stitch with, as you can see. You've got that bottom hand feeding the um, materials up to my top hand, which is actually the one holding the hook. And so, as I said earlier, we have, it's the back of the embroidery we're looking at right now because we work from the reverse when we timbre. Um, the underside, or what's currently the underside, is going to be the right side of our embroidery. So, you know, if you could get your garment into a hoop like this, then in theory you could timbre it. It would need to be a woven fabric. It needs to have no stretch to it. Um, those are sort of the confines, I think, of what you would need to do, or you'd need to stabilise it hugely. Um, it also kind of harps back, therefore, to the question that we had earlier about are there any types of fabric um, that you can't tamper with? Actually, that's what I should have said earlier. See, my tri you guys are leading me on the train of thought. Stretch fabrics are a no-no when it comes to timbre. Um, when it comes to stretch fabrics in general and embroidery, the fabric will continue to stretch, but the embroidery will not. So any area you embroider will lose the stretch qualities in that area. So that's always something to consider. But particularly for timbre, because as the name suggests, you need to have it stretched really tight as a drum, um, you know, if the fabric itself has stretch, there'll be too much bounce in the fabric for you to be able to create the right tension that you need to in order to do the chain stitch. And chances are, what would happen is that you would take it out of the hoop and the area would become um, untensioned, like the whole hoop would become untensioned um, and the whole piece would likely just sort of scrunch in. Um, if you were working on a stretch fabric, that is. So, yeah, definitely something to avoid there. Clothing, again, is likely to be opaque. I mean, I only say lightly. Of course, there are certain garments that are on the sheerer side or certain layers of garments that are on a sheer side. So you'd need to get your tambouring to a level that you could comfortably work on something that was opaque and do it by the feel that I mentioned earlier without being able to see your underneath hand. Great question though, thank you. Lovely to see how many of you are joining us today. Do feel free to give me a wave. Um, it's always nice to See how many people there are. And let me know where you're watching from. I'm always curious to see what part of the world you're in. Because you already know where I am. So, um, yeah, always nice to know. How did you guys get on this weekend? Did you have a good weekend? I do hope so. I did actually manage to get some stitching of my own done this weekend, which was lovely. Um, I actually finished a project that I've been working on for, oh gosh, when did I start that? Maybe, I don't know, maybe October. And I promised myself I was gonna finish it over Christmas, but I didn't. You know, time just gets away from you. But I actually finished it this weekend, um, you know, just before March. <laughs> so, you know, my Christmas aim was a little off, but isn't it always? I feel like it always takes longer than you think it's going to. Nonetheless, I am very pleased that that project is now done and I'm pretty pleased with the outcome of it. Um, it is actually sequin based, although it's not timbre. Um, that particular piece. 
So I'm obviously in a very sequiny, shiny sort of place at the moment in my mind. It would seem everywhere I've got shiny things. If you are curious about that piece uh, or other pieces that I also produce, if you'd like to see more from me, basically, um, I do also have my own Instagram and YouTube channel called Taking Time with Tasha, um, where I document my own craft processes, some of which end up feeding back into uh, some of the London Embroidery School's classes. Some things are just my own kind of musings creative musings like for example if you'd like to see what's in my embroidery case what does a professional embroiderer keep in their embroidery case then you know you can find that over there so we have we've got quite a few people answering where you're from oh thank you guys so we have Fortaventura, Brazil, London, Switzerland, Brighton, Sweden, France, Belfast, Massachusetts. Incredible. What a range. Well, thank you all for joining in, um, you know, both here and abroad, at whatever time of day it is for you. That's the other thing about embroidery for me, is it's a bit like, you know, shiny, pretty things are good all over the world. Everybody likes shiny, pretty things. It's a real leveller. Sort of brings people together. And that's what I personally love about the London Embroidery School community, is that it's just a group of people who are all really excited about making pretty things. And, you know, that feels good. So I, I hope you agree with me on that front. It's um, It's been really lovely to get to know you guys on here. And um, this is why I'm always sort of really enjoy doing these stitch alongs and coming along and just kind of chatting away, hearing what you guys have got to say and getting some kind of, yeah, live feedback from you. Now I'm heading towards the end of the sequence that I have prepared today. And I have kind of been chatting away for what, nearly 45 minutes now. So I'm sure that you've probably had enough. Um, so if you have any final questions, do feel free to submit them in the comments box below. Um, equally, this will be going onto our YouTube channel in due course. And if you're watching on there in the future, um, then you can also obviously pose us any questions you might have to the comments box underneath. I will try and get round to answering those as soon as I see them. So I'm going to finish up with my stitching here. Just make sure there's no further questions. Oh, is Tampa still used today in fashion? Or is it a traditional technique? No, it's still very much used in fashion, um, particularly in yeah, higher end pieces. Um, you know, your likes of like Dior and Chanel, those sorts of um, really traditional fashion houses will definitely have in-house embroiderers who are well-versed in timbre to create those really sort of sparkly beaded bases that we talked about. Um, yeah, I think it's still really got a place in fashion today. It's not just a traditional technique. And it's still very usable, so long as we make sure that there are still enough people who know how to do it. And so, yeah, if you are one of those people who has an interest in learning how to do it, then you're kind of part of keeping these sorts of skills alive. We do an awful lot, obviously, online and with computers, and it's a real privilege to take a little step back and just do some stitching, make something with your own hands, and, um, yeah, see it come to life 
just in the real world, not in the virtual world necessarily. Thank you for that question. Right, I will leave it there for you for today. Thank you everyone for joining me. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you for all your questions and your kind comments and everything. It's, yeah, been a joy. Um, if you want to see more from us, we are, of course, London Embroidery School. I am Natasha, uh, one of the teachers from here. And um, yeah, until next time, have fun, stay safe and keep making beautiful things. Bye for now.